Iran's president is killed in a helicopter crash. How the country's citizens are reacting. And the war between Russia and Ukraine continues. One United States official gives an update on how they are helping Ukraine. And we are dry in the short term, but rain chances are looming later this week. Your forecast coming up as Mountain News First at Four continues. Mountain News First at Four continues. The death of Iran's president and foreign minister could have an impact on that country's internal politics, but it is unlikely to change Iran's aggressive stance against the U.S. and the West. CBS's Erica Brown has more from the White House. Warners filled the streets in Iran Monday after learning their president, Ibrahim Raisi, and foreign minister were found dead in the wreckage of a helicopter crash. <laughs> this man said, this truly great calamity has descended upon us like a burning thunderbolt. In other parts of the world, Iranian exiles pointed to Raisi's history of brutally suppressing protesters. Resistance unit inside of Iran, they are very, very happy today. They celebrate also inside of Iran because he killed all of our people. Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei quickly named Vice President Mohammad Makhbar the interim president, and he held his first cabinet meeting. Iran has been at the center of crises around the world, and that's unlikely to change with Raisi's death. We will continue to confront the Iranian regime's support for terrorism, its proliferation of dangerous weapons, and its advancement of nuclear, uh, its nuclear program in ways that have no credible civilian purpose. At least one Iranian official blamed the U.S. for the crash, saying sanctions prevent Iran from buying replacement parts for their fleet of American-made helicopters. The United States had no part to play uh, in, in that crash, and so and that's, that's a fact plain and simple. The U.S. issued condolences for Raisi's death, even as the administration blames him for trampling on human rights. Erica Brown, CBS News, the White House. The State Department said that Iran asked for help in the search and rescue recovery efforts following the helicopter crash, and America was willing to provide that support, but logistical reasons prevented it from happening. Russia is continuing a renewed attack on Ukraine. The Associated Press reports 11 people died in a recent attack on the northeastern region of Ukraine. United States Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin says Russia is using their own missiles and Iranian drones to attack. Austin says leaders in dozens of countries will continue to support Ukraine in their defensive efforts against the invasion. The United States remains determined to do our part. We are again delivering urgently needed assistance to Ukraine, and the security assistance that we are now rushing to Ukraine will make a difference in this fight. And that includes 155 millimeter artillery rounds and ammunition for HIMARS. President Biden announced a $400 million aid package earlier this month to help Ukraine defend the city of Kharkiv. Well, it feels like summer across the mountains on this Monday afternoon, tracking some dry and sunny weather and some warm conditions as well. Let's take a live look across the region, tracking plenty of blue sky from Buffalo Mountain, also from the London Corbin Airport and from downtown Pikeville over in Pike County. Those highs today much warmer. We should be in the middle 70s. Most of us today in the middle to upper 80s, up to 87 for Irvin, also in Monticello, 86 for Manchester and Somerset, up to 85 in Jackson, also in Florida. Floyd County at this hour. We are dry all thanks to high pressure. This area of high pressure off the eastern coast that will bring some more dry conditions to go into your Monday evening. Also for most of us on Tuesday and on Wednesday, but we are tracking a few changes by Wednesday evening and to close out the work week in the short term, though more dry conditions are on the way. Those lows are mild in the upper 50s to lower 60s to wake up on your Tuesday. And more mainly dry weather is on tap tomorrow for your voting plans on Tuesday. A small chance of a stray shower and same story by Wednesday, but notice by late Wednesday, pushing into your Thursday and Friday, that moisture is set to increase and we are tracking some more scattered showers to close out the work week and same story for your holiday weekend. More details on that weekend forecast, plus those rain chances coming up in just a few minutes. Steve. All right, Cameron, thank you.
For the second spring in a row, Canada is battling several large wildfires and some of that smoke is once again drifting south. Thousands of Canadians are under evacuation orders with several fires having been deemed out of control. The smoke, which contains harmful pollutants, is lowering the air quality in parts of the U.S. Doctors recommend staying indoors as much as possible during times of poor air quality because the risks can be severe for everyone. So having increased rates of bronchitis and asthma, um, wheezing, having itchy, irritated eyes, but also your lungs are the, um, the conduit between the air outside and your bloodstream. And so those particles get into your bloodstream and they can cause heart, heart attacks, they can cause strokes, they can in the long run um, cause in, increased risks of lung cancer. And so there's a lot of risk to having all of the smoke in the air. A study from Nature out last fall says more than 2 billion people are exposed to wildfire smoke each day. Pope Francis says he worries about the harm social media is doing to children. The Pope sat down with CBS News for a historic interview recently, the first time any Pope has talked with an American broadcast network for an extensive conversation. CBS Evening News anchor Nora O'Donnell asked him about many contemporary issues, including social media's impact on young people. Speaking in his native Spanish with an English translator, Pope Francis says it alienates young people. It makes them live in an unreal world made up of fantasy or in an aggressive world or a rosy world and so many things. The media has a serious responsibility, a media outlet that only lives off propaganda, off gossip, off soiling others is a dirty media outlet. The Pope also spoke about the wars in Gaza and Ukraine and much more. You can see more of their conversation tonight at 10 p.m. in a primetime special here on WYMT. Rapper and music producer Sean Diddy Combs is apologizing for repeatedly hitting his then-girlfriend Cassie Ventura. The 2016 incident was caught on surveillance video. According to Ventura's now-settled lawsuit, the pair began dating several years after they met in 2005. They parted ways in 2019. In a video posted on his verified Instagram account Sunday, Diddy says he is, quote, truly sorry for his actions. I take full responsibility for my actions in that video. I'm disgusted. I was disgusted then when I did it. I'm disgusted now. I went and I sought out professional help. I had to go into therapy, I'm going to rehab. Diddy's apology comes on the heels of a series of civil lawsuits saying he was involved in sex trafficking and sexual abuse. Allegations Combs has repeatedly denied. Coming up on First at Four, not only roads but airports are expected to be packed for Memorial Day weekend travel. How one airline is preparing. Plus, high pressure keeps us dry and mild in the short term, but rain chances are back later this week. Your forecast after this break.